bringing the people behind our food to life. You have a lawsuit um, against the USDA and their subdivision APHIS, A-P-H-I-S. APHIS is charged with the deregulation process in GMO beet or GMO crops. So if any company wants to introduce a GMO crop, APHIS does uh, an assessment of the crop to determine whether or not it can be grown without being regulated. When they first start growing these crops, uh, they have to be grown in very uh, controlled situations with a lot of extra isolation and a lot of steps taken to prevent them from escaping. So you can't really commercialize a crop till it's deregulated. APHIS is in charge of doing that. Environmental impact statements are what's normally required whenever an agricultural pest is released into the environment for any reason. So because in the production of GMOs, an agricultural pest is actually employed in the process, a bacterium. Uh, this bacterium called agrobacterium has the ability to transfer DNA from itself into a rose plant, say. And, and this bacterium, they discovered this not very long ago, can actually move uh, DNA uh, into places in the rose plant to get the rose plant to produce food that feeds the bacterium. That's the whole idea. Well, the molecular biologists figured out that they could use that mechanism, that agrobacterium mechanism, to move DNA from a bacterium into a plant or from a fish into a plant or whatever they wanted to do, they could use this bacterium as a tool. They can also use viruses to do the same thing. But in any of these cases, whether it's a virus or a bacterium, according to the law, we say, they have to do an environmental impact statement on these before they can be deregulated. And our case is saying, you did not do this to the USDA APHIS. We're saying you did not do an environmental impact statement on this before you released it. And we want you to do that because we want to know what all the impacts on the environment are going to be, including what are going to be the impacts on the seed production zone where this stuff is produced? What are going to be the impacts in the market, the, the uh, farm markets where these products are being purveyed? Now, when Monsanto released their Roundup Ready alfalfa, they didn't do any of this stuff. And as soon as their Roundup Ready alfalfa hit the, hit the ground, there was immediate chaos in the alfalfa market. Suddenly, because this stuff was unlabeled, did not have to be labeled because it was deregulated. It was unlabeled, but people cared in the forage business. The Japanese cared. And they just said, we're not going to buy any alfalfa from the United States if we can't tell whether or not it contains GMOs. And this was just chaos, and the courts recognized this. And so, this was our first victory, was in the Roundup Ready alfalfa case. And that's the precedent that we're using in the Roundup Ready beet case. Same precedent. No environmental impact statement was done, and so, and if one had been done in the alfalfa case, they would have realized right away that they were, that the environmental impact on neighboring alfalfa farms was that they could no longer make a claim that they were GMO free. They could no longer claim to be organic. They couldn't claim anything because there was an obvious threat to their integrity right there. And then once that stuff got sold, there was no way in the system to keep the Roundup Ready material from being mixed in with the normal material. So the judge saw right away that this release into the farming environment was having a negative impact. And the judge ordered APHIS, you must go back and do an environmental impact statement 
where Monsanto cannot sell Roundup Ready alfalfa. We think that if they are forced to do an environmental impact statement in sure beets, they're going to find the same thing. We would also like for it to be labeled. But Congress is probably going to have to do that, the labeling part. But in the case of the alfalfa, the judge ordered labeling of every bale of Roundup Ready alfalfa that is on the market. The judge did not order those Roundup Ready alfalfa fields to be removed or plowed down or anything. That would have been a taking. The judge was not willing to take an alfalfa field from a farmer, but he was willing to say that Monsanto itself was responsible for making sure every bale of alfalfa that came out of that field had a label on it so that no consumer would accidentally buy it if they didn't want it. It's a very important precedent. And, but it all comes back to the National Environmental Protection Act, signed into law by Richard M. Nixon. That is the law that requires an EIS on the release of any agricultural pest.